time, 4.30, 4.30 in the morning. This is my first time out on this farm, but I have worked on a farm out in Kyogre before. I've never sold anything this big yet. It's 118 acres, 540 metres of creek frontage. The, the creek frontage is what really makes the place, it's pretty rare. To me, if you're in a place like this, you have to have a nice creek. We're up near the headwaters of Crumlin Creek here, so we get tumbling water and you know, water flowing over boulders and all that, it flows crystal clear. The valley's still sort of old fashioned, still people here have been here for 70 years, you know, the guy who's the uh, fire warden here, when he was a kid, he used to live on a house down behind the orchard. Just made up a, a beautiful. Come on, we got to eat the cockatoos. Are, eggs. The cockatoos have arrived. They're having breakfast. We better eat. I think we should go down to the creek and run along the front there. But there's ten acres of straight flats, a dead flat on the creek, and I got rock tools down there. You know. And then I'd like very much to walk up the back, up to the creek at the very back. That runs up Tomlin Mountain, doesn't it? And that's yeah. where the water flows down that creek. Some of the freshest water you could really ever get. You couldn't get fresher straight out of springs from the mountains at the back up at Tomlin. How many paddocks do you have? Well, fenced, separate fenced paddocks. We've got two down the front here and the bee paddock, that's three. I've got two on the hillside, five. I've got one at the back on the right is six. I've got one at the back on the left is seven and a separate one at the back there. So I've got eight. eight. Just gonna miss the beauty of the place. I mean, sounds a bit strange, but there's so many spots that you sit down and you think this is beautiful. You know, I was sitting just behind us here when we whip a snip down there and tidied up the grass yesterday just in front of the, behind the barbecue there. And there's a beautiful little sitting area, it looks down the creek all the way to the east, so in the morning you see the sun coming up. And it's just a beautiful spot. So I guess what I will miss about it is the number of beautiful spots there are where you can be sitting there, you're a thousand mile from anywhere, you're effectively out in pristine country and you're away from everything. The left hand side as you go up into the valley is definitely, well it's not riparian rainforest like down the front, it's mountain rainforest. The creek runs up the middle, the, the creek that's part of this property, not Crumlin Creek. It runs up the middle, there's a left hand side, the right hand side goes right back in against the hills up to Tomwin, Mount Tomwin at the back. Where exactly are we? On the very eastern boundary of the property, about halfway from the Crumlin Creek Road to the back of the property. The property runs more or less north-south. Elevation here about 150 metres, about 100 metres higher than the rest of the valley. This is where I always thought I'd build a house. It's just such a fantastic spot. It faces east, you've got great views to the back up over Tomwin. The Tomwin Road is just on the ridgeline there. This is subtropical rainforest. At the top end of Crumman Valley is subtropical rainforest. Crumman Valley and the Tweed was all about cedars. Back in, you know, the first development and the first settlements in this area were chasing cedar trees. Cedar trees. In fact, there's nice eucalypt forest if you follow this ridge along, which I call Tomwin Track, because we go from here all the way up to Tomwin Road. We can drive another couple of hundred metres and after that I walk. Like there's a little mountain stream there that runs right up to the cliff face at the back. And in fact Crumman Valley is said to be the most biodiverse part of Australia. This is far more biodiverse for example than the Daintree. The Daintree is a tropical rainforest 100%. Whereas here there's a transition between different rainforests, eucalypt forest and of course when you get on the flats over near Wollombar you've got a different yeah. ecosystem as well. Here we've got eucalypt forest, we've got subtropical rainforest generally, we've got the riparian rainforest down on the front of the property. So that's why Crumman Valley is such an issue for people who are interested in the environment because it is unique. You know, so there's more diverse. species in Crumman Valley than any other part of Queensland. And we've got most of them on the property here because we go from the hilltops, the mountainside, all the way down to the creek. Yeah, wow. And in between we've got the farming flats, you know, where people cleared them years ago for dairy. The original clearing in this part was originally for timber, 
then dairy property, but there was a lot of soldier settlements. Over the road here was an area of soldier settlements after the war, and they used to give the soldiers a narrow strip, like 50 metres wide if you're lucky, a kilometre deep, going all the way up to the top of the mountain. And that was, you were given that by the government to help rehabilitate after the war. Few restrictions, you had to clear 95% of it. So those, the other side there was all cleared. I've got photos of the house taken from over there looking that way, and you can't see a tree. And we've pretty well got the place now back to native trees. big old Morton Bay fig here. I don't know how old it is, everyone asks me, but 50 years, probably more. It's pretty healthy, nice staghorns up in the branches there. I've got a good set of yards there. I mean, that set of yards would run about 50 cattle, no trouble. I wouldn't suggest 50 cattle on the place. If you want to run it so you've always got nice grass like we have now, I'd run 20 cows here all the time with a bull. In the wet season, I'd bring some uh, steers in and fatten them at the end of the wet season, send them away. So that'd be my suggestion is 20 breeding cows, so you'll get 20 calves a year, best part, with a bull, and then bring in others as you get better season. There's a molasses tank over there. We used to buy molasses from over the border and feed it to them as a supplement. Just behind it is the old cream shed. There's a cream shed from the dairy days. It's a pretty good property for horses. You know, we've got 10 acres of straight flats on the creek, which are good for horses. We've got another few acres over there in what we call the bee paddock. It's a bee paddock because my daughter was going to put beehives in there. Plenty of moisture in this paddock because you can see it rolling down from the hill. So we always have a lot of grass here. And that's the old bales. Uh, it used to be a dairy farm. Still got the original bales we'd put the cows in for milking. All done with timber and no bolts or nails anywhere. They had timber dowels. It's quite unique and the shed, as I say, is built again with no bolts. Over behind us, the orchard, 15 years planting there now. Anytime I see a fruit tree that I haven't got, I get it. You'll make a good farm hand one day, mate. Absolutely unreal. Beautiful day for it. So this orchard, when you get a bit lower and you get down into like the area we are here, that's good silt material and the grass grows like mad. So I've got over 100 fruit trees here. Lots of citrus. The citrus grows really well here. I can go to one lime tree and fill the back of the ute with limes. The grapes, the grapes haven't grown too well this year. I know the, the word Kurumban means high trees. I think I've got one sec. <laughs> I wrote it down somewhere, so I just. So where we are now is the, the unseeded land of the Yugumba people. There you go, I've learned something today. <laughs> but probably, I mean, the high trees here, there's really two types of trees in the valley that you'd put in that category. There's the, the blue figs, the condong, which you see all through the valley, and they're tall, majestic trees. You now they're one of my favourite trees is one over here, and you can see a couple down on the end of this stretch of the creek. The other one you get a lot of here are the hoop pines. You know, hoop pine is one of only several native pine trees in Australia. And the hoop pines grow really tall. You can see some up the house, you know, the big ones at the house, they're a metre and a half across. And they tend to stand out above the skyline. So when you look at the cliffs over the back here, there's one up on the top there, right at the top. You sort of you wonder what tree it is sticking out, that, that'd be a hoop pine. They're my favourite tree, they're, they're so majestic, they've got a, a lovely leaf 
that you, stands out against the sky. You can see the sort of shape of the leaves even against the sky, you know. The hoop pine is actually a rainforest tree in this part of the world. You know, you tend not to think of the pine trees in the rainforest, but the hoop pines are definitely a rainforest tree up here. The old days, Grumman Valley and northern New South Wales was famous for red cedar. I mean, that was the first thing that happened in this part of the world was timber getting. And that's why there's not a lot of red cedars left. There's one big red cedar there lying in the paddock further downstream, which must have been milled, oh, I don't know, tens of years ago. And it got washed down in a big flood from the sawmill and came down this stream here. Must have caused some chaos with their fencing and everything else as it came downstream, but it's lying in the paddock there just alongside the creek down further. So maybe that's what the reference is to, is to either the hoops or maybe to the, the blue figs. It's very quiet and it's just a nice place to sit. And you could relax out here. Yeah. Yeah. This is the western boundary, the westernmost end of the stream in my place. It's the upper part of Crumman Creek. When it's not raining, you get the stream dropped back to about this level. Very clean water. We've had rain only a day or so ago and the water is, is crystal clear. Mainly because there's no farming or anything above us. We're only one and a half K from, or two K from Kugel National Park. And there's nothing else here that would dirty the water up really. We go for 540 metres that way, downstream. And it's pretty much the same as this. There's a few narrower bits down further and there's a couple of little bits wider. But this is fairly typical of the of the stream in this part of the Crumman Valley. A Crumman Valley, there's essentially one stream. That's what formed the valley. There's a lot of side streams, such as the one that runs through the middle of the property. The stream is similar to this, but it's getting up into the headwaters more. So the boulders in the stream are bigger. And when you go at the back of the property here, the boulders are a metre, two metres across, which just shows the velocity in that part of that stream. But here the velocity is not too high usually, so the boulders are a lot smaller and it's more tranquil. We get platypus here, this side of the causeway, platypus. In fact, there's quite a lot of platypus now in Corumban Creek and they monitor them a bit further down, but we've seen them swimming up here. Fish, uh, perch, probably this big in this section here, especially like in this little stretch here where it's even in, in low flow like now, it's this deep and the fish come up. A lot of eels, of course, little turtles. We also get the, the big blue and white yabbies, the local yabby. We get a lot more of them in the small creek that runs through the middle of the property. Uh, for some reason, they seem to like the, the back part of that creek. But this stream here is sort of typical of a stream in this part of a valley where there's good pools for fish to swim in and, and that sort of thing, and then there's a lot of rapids, you know. So, this is fairly typical of what you get in, in a, a stream that's not a really young stream, which you get further up the headwaters, and it's not an old stream, which we get down to the mouth of the creek, which is, you know, a lot wider and siltier and more dirt. Whereas here you can see the water is crystal clear. We're 16 kilometres from the, from the coast. But on the other hand, it is in a valley that doesn't get a lot of traffic past here. We get a lot of animals in the bush. We get koala bears here, we get echidna, nice goannas, huge range of birds up here, cockatoos and pink and gray glass. We probably get half a dozen different types of parrots from the uh, crimson rosellas, the kings. And of course, as I said, we get the, the cockatoos and glass and the corellas. But you can see today, it's just a quiet place. You know, there's not a lot of activity around, so. You know, the wildlife is pretty quiet up here. We don't get a lot of kangaroos here, although for the last year or so, we've been seeing a lot more of the very dark brown wallabies. I think they're probably a rock wallaby, but I wouldn't expect rock wallabies here, but they're not really big. They're not like a big kangaroo, but they're, they're really cute. When we had the drought two or three years ago, a lot of the animals came out of the bush to feed on grass where there was grass. Oh, try to get the buggy into gear. Yeah, so we're going down from where we were sitting there before. Crumman Creek is actually moving to the north. Yeah, the streams tend to migrate, and this one is migrating towards a road. So you can see here that the bank on the other side is steeper. Not a good sound when <laughs> I change gears. Yeah. Gotta get out here before he sells it. Sometimes 
you've got to find a point of difference. That's why I'm here today, Bill. Looking at that, and a lot of people find that a very severe image to paint because there's not a lot of relief. There's a lot of trees, there's a lot of green. But when you, when you look closely, you see, see it closely, the trees got, start the bright green in the foreground, yeah. and then the bluey green, then the browny green up to the top of the hill. And all the shades just go all the way back. Yeah. And that cliff face coming down really, really jumps out. Well, that was probably sea line like millions of years ago. Yeah, well, you think? think? All sea level. Yeah. Because that's pretty well, you can see yeah. it goes through. It does. But what a beautiful day. <laughs> It's definitely a Queenslander because the photos we have of it from 1930 show only the upstairs area and there was nothing underneath. It was on stilts, the same as all the old Queenslanders. There's two bedrooms upstairs and there's sort of a sitting room that my wife made into another bedroom for, for visitors and daughter and that. A kitchen, big eating area, a bit of a sitting area upstairs. Downstairs there's a, a living area, a study and a bathroom. It's all weatherboard, the old-fashioned weatherboard. We put a new deck on the veranda up here. If you had a clean sheet of paper here, I guess, it's where you'd put a house, because from here you see all down the front, uh, the river flats, all up the back of the property, you see down to where the bales and the yards are. Behind the house is the sheds for, for the gear, for tractors and whatever, and further along the ridge here up the back is the, the big shed. Um, I've got three bays in there, they're six metre bays, two of them are seven metres high and the other one's about five. And then on one end is a double storey unit. It's got a good view down through, through the slope down here over the orchard. Infrastructure for cattle, about eight yards altogether. There's ten acres of creek flats in front of us. On the right hand side there's pasture and also that runs then into the forest at the back that goes all the way to the top of the ridge. On the western side of the property, I've got two paddocks on the hill. And then down here below us, we've got the orchard and the yards, and there's a couple of small paddocks around the yards for, for working cattle. Good fencing, we've got timber, post and rail all around the, this side of the orchard and all around the yards. Four rail where it matters, you know, because you don't want cattle getting out of the yards. And the rest of the property is well fenced. The one area we haven't been is the back right hand half of the property. The right hand side goes right back in against the hills up to Tomwin, Mount Tomwin at the back. There's one area that I'd like to walk down into. The centre line of the property is running sort of more or less northwest, south, east. So we're as close to New South Wales as you can get from this part of the world. There's still some eucalypts here because we're just getting into the rainforest. Mostly stags up here get elkhorns as well, which are the thinner leaf ones. This water's coming out of the mountains up here. There's nothing else to pollute it. It's absolutely pure. Because if we were to walk up the hill there, I can show you where all the little rock pools are all the way up. There is water here, but it's all running pretty well under all these rocks and boulders. The other interesting thing is you can look at the rock size here. Down the front, we talked about how big the boulders are in the front creek, which is sort of not in the headwaters of Crumman Creek, not quite. Whereas here, this stream, it's a lot smaller stream than Crumman Creek, but this stream is a mountain stream and you can see the size of the boulders here. When you see a boulder like that, that means that the water force has been enough at some stage to roll that rock down the hill. So you can imagine how much water pours down here. As you get up into these slopes, there's so much rainfall and so much leaching of nutrient out of the soil that the soils aren't as good as you get further down and not as good as you would get in the remnant volcanic soil up on the top. Further up along the ridge, probably at 180 metres, 190 mm -hmm. metres high here, which is getting up in the valley. The best thing is, but there's a view of the Kugels straight through those trees there. The other thing that's good about it is this is pretty well the transition between the sub-temperate rainforest 
and eucalypt forest. So we're in a real transition. You can see here we've got rainforest trees around us. Cedar tree there. And actually there's a very big old cedar tree over there that's been chopped. Really interesting because they've still got the, the cuts where the guys put the springboards. So they get up higher and cut it cooler up here. Nice red volcanic soil. See just behind us there's brush box, Brisbane box. So we're in that transition as I said. Going up here, eucalypts is a stringy here. The tree ferns around the edges, and then you go in further, you've got mostly palms trying to get the height. They're all trying to get up to sunlight, so they're all tall. And here we've got water in the stream here, so we're now hitting bedrock down here. There's a, a little creek runs up into that valley. You can see the valley up there. It's a series of waterfalls when it rains. But when you go further up there, you can see the ferns disappear. On the very top there is New South Wales. When you look out this way, which is starting to go down the slope, it's more rainforest, right? So you can see the rainforest type trees here, some vines up among them. This whole area being on the edge of a great volcano, if you go to the high country, like over on the ridges there, if you go up onto the ridge, you'll generally find remnant basalt soil. So a basalt soil, when it decomposes, generally ends up deep red, sometimes black, and that's the remnant of the, of the basalt flows. Right? When you get further down, a lot of the nutrients and everything out of these slopes ends up down on the river flats, which is why you get very fertile soil down on the river flats. Oh, this is an ancient part of the world, ancient landscape. So we've got a track goes through up here and there's another track up further there. The cow is sitting on that rock and it died. It's still there. I got burning feet from hot ash fold. A voice within me tells me don't go home. What are we doing today? Lunch was fantastic. The meat was excellent. Great way to eat a piece of steak. Sitting up here on the hill with the breeze blowing, blue sky. I'm fantastic, Brett. And once again, thank you for throwing me into the soup and asking me how I feel about this property. <laughs> Bill, the choice is yours. Would you like a stubby or a can? As a buyer, the choice is yours to own the greatest Australian dream. I'll drink to that. Hard to get better than this. I reckon we're done. Cheers.